grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can get the out. Let's try that one more time. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. There we go. There we go. And that's what Easter is all about. I love our gospel lesson this morning in Matthew 28. When Mary and the other Mary and the women, they go to the tomb and they're expecting sadness, they're expecting darkness, and as they approach the tomb, literally the earth shakes. There's this flash of light and all of a sudden there's an angel there that rolls this big stone away and they see in the tomb that Jesus is not there, but Christ is risen. Uh, and they see and they know and they're told to go and tell the others and then they go and they meet Jesus and they get to see and touch and hold Jesus knowing that he is no longer dead but he himself is alive. That's the message that literally shakes the earth upside down. And I think we see what that means for us actually in our New Testament lesson from Acts chapter 10, or maybe just before our New Testament lesson in Acts chapter 10. Peter, he finally understands what the resurrection of Jesus means. You remember Peter, he was one of Jesus' disciples. He was the guy that, that, that really, he wanted to come out like an earthquake. He wanted to do everything right. But no matter how hard he tried to get everything right, he ended up failing. He was the guy that had denied Jesus three times, left him all alone, left him to hang on the cross. After the resurrection, he was also the guy that Jesus went to three times and said, hey Peter, do you love me? Well, go feed my lambs. And he started telling others about Jesus. But I still don't think Peter understood exactly what the resurrection meant until one night when he went to bed. And I'm not sure if he went to bed hungry one evening, but what I do know is that evening the Holy Spirit gave him this magnificent dream. You see, in that dream, he dreamed that, that coming down from heaven was this like sheet with four corners on it. And on this sheet were all sorts of animals. And they were all the unclean animals. They were all the animals that the Jews were not allowed to touch or eat or associate. Right today, we kind of know them as like pigs and those types of animals. And he hears this voice of God telling him, saying, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter, trying to know what he's supposed to know, trying to do what he's supposed to know, says, hold on a second, God. Wait, I'm not going to give in to that. Right? I know what I'm supposed to do as a Jew. I'm not supposed to eat these animals. Right? No bacon-wrapped scallops for me. <laughs> he says, no, God, I'm not going to do it. But then the voice of God speaks to him again as he's calling these things unclean and common. And the voice says to him three different times again, what God has made clean, do not call common. What God has made clean, do not call common. It might as well said, Christ is risen. This is the audience participation sermon. We got a few more of those, so, so keep up with me. Right? What God has called clean, do not call common. And you might say, well, what does that mean? Right? All of a sudden, he has this sheet with all these animals up and down at these unclean animals. God says it's clean. Jesus rose for us. Yay! Right? And you know what that means for us? That means this afternoon, you can eat your Easter ham, right? Well, it means that, right? It means you can have your pulled pork sandwich if you want to. But does it mean something more than that? And absolutely, it does. 
And while Peter himself is perplexed at what this means, all of a sudden he gets a knock at his door. And the people at his door are servants of Cornelius, who's this Roman centurion, which basically is like this Roman general. So you can think of this Roman general, and Cornelius, this Roman centurion or this Roman general, he was a God-fearing man, right? But he was still a Gentile. He was unclean. He was common. He was not to be associated with by anybody that was Jewish, especially Peter. And you see, Cornelius had had a similar dream that said, hey, go send your servants and send for Peter and have them come to you. And he thought it was weird, but because of this dream and because of this vision from God, he went ahead and sent his servants, and his servants are there with Peter. And Peter wakes up and goes, I had the strangest dream. God's got to be up to something. You know what? I know I'm not supposed to do this, but let me go ahead and go back. And he arrives and he goes to the house of Cornelius, right? This unclean, common Roman centurion. While they were living peacefully with one another, this is kind of basically like their enemy that's there. And he's there in the living room, I imagine the living room of Cornelius, and well, the Bible doesn't say this, but I imagine, you know, Cornelius being this centurion, he's got all his servants around him, you know, some guy's over in the corner, like eating his pulled pork sandwich or something like that, and Peter, as he's there in his home, realizes that this is something new. This is something different. This is something that's awkward. And he acknowledges the awkwardness of the situation as he says, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. Right? This isn't supposed to be happening. This guy Cornelius, he's a Gentile, I'm a Jew. This is not right. But then he says, God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. Or in other words, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And then he goes on to basically give the sermon that was our New Testament lesson today. And he says, you guys have heard, we've all seen it together. We know that since Jesus was baptized, he was doing the work. He was the anointed one who was healing people who were sick, who was raising the dead. And ultimately, he took on all of our uncleanness. He took on all of our sin as we nailed him to a tree. And he died and he rose so that nothing and no one would be considered common or unclean. For Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Hallelujah! And Peter, you got to picture this. Cornelius was the enemy. He was the unclean one. And he realizes that if Jesus had died for Peter, then he also died for this commoner, for this unclean one, for Cornelius, and he too had the same hope that Peter had. Right? Remember, Peter had failed. Peter had messed up. Peter knew what it was like to be common or unclean. He knew what it was like to have that forgiveness. He also realized there at that day in Cornelius' living room that Jesus has been raised not just for Peter, but also for, for Cornelius. And I think that's true. Actually, I don't think that's true. I know that's true for you and me. We, on our own, are common and unclean. We, on our own, don't have it all together. Right? Sometimes we have that voice in our mind that reminds us that. It says, hey man, you really messed up there. Right? And sometimes we're tempted to kind of look over and say, man, look at those commoners that are kind of out there. Man, they're Gentiles. They're like Cornelius. Thank God I'm better than them. And we have that temptation to judge and try to rank ourselves a little bit better than some people we might find a little bit more common than us. But in reality, we are common. We are unclean. We are sinners. We fail through and through. 
And you might be tempted here to, to judge others or kind of rank yourself against others to feel a little bit better, to try to not feel as common. Or maybe today you feel like Peter. Maybe today you know that you have failed. Maybe today, before you walked into the church, you were thinking the church might collapse on you when you walked in because of some of the things that you've done wrong. Because you know that you're unclean. Because you know that you're not worthy. Well, at Easter, and what Peter realizes there in Cornelius' living room, is that Christ is risen. God shows no partiality because Jesus died and rose for you. You are no longer common. You are no longer unclean. Jesus dies, takes on your uncleanliness, and He rises and gives you that forgiveness. He rises for you, and you are now His Son and His Daughter. You are no longer common. You are an heir to his kingdom, a prince or a princess in his kingdom. And Peter realizes that. And that's my hope for you this morning, that in the core of your being, you would know that you are no longer common. For you are a son or daughter of Jesus. For Christ has risen. Amen. May the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.